It's going to be another philosophical one. Hello, and welcome back to the Pat Podcast, Episode 7. I am so happy that you're back. It, um, it means a lot to me for you to be watching this. I know that there's a million other things you probably would rather be doing, but somehow you found a little bit of boredom in your uh, schedule, so you've filled it with the Pat Podcast, and that's a huge honor to me, so thank you for that. I wish I had that same mentality about an incident that just had happened to me a couple of days ago. You know, it's funny. An embarrassing thing can happen to you, but then you tell nobody about it because you don't want anybody to know about it, but then you get onto a medium such as this, like a podcast, and suddenly you want to tell everyone. I think it's because you want to admit it to somebody that you did something dumb, but you don't want to admit it to the people that you know because they can consistently make fun of you for it, which is weird when you say it to an ether that has a YouTube comment section. So I work at a place where uh, there's a lot of electronics and there's a lot of paper and stuff like that. And a while back, we had this, uh, we had a water heater break and it flooded the back office and it flooded the the bottom half of my office. And it was just, it was, it was bad. Th thankfully, like the, the big, the most expensive thing, our computers and stuff, they were on like little mounts. So nothing really got damaged. And, um, thankfully like a massive printer that we use, uh, it was on top of a little scooty thing, little metal scooter thing. So it didn't get any of the water. And uh, it's it's a little bit frustrating. So they we, we call people to come and clean this up because it can it can be a problem if you let water sit for too long. Uh, my older listeners probably know this best, and uh, you can you can get mold. Well, they came in, they soup vac the whole place, they got it all nice and clean and pristine. It was great. We find out after moving some stuff to make more space that there's a big hole in the wall where there's just this black gunk everywhere and it's mold. And it's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. The, uh, oh, and next to it, there's a little outlet where you see all this, what looks like sawdust coming out of it, which to me says termites. But uh, according to the people we called to come look at it, say uh, they say it's uh, because of the mold. It... And so the, these two guys come in and they're checking out the, the damage. And uh, I'm trying to be courteous because I was working on something else, but I kind of got called up to bat to be like, hey, can you deal with this, these guys and all that? And I'm like, sure. Well, I'm going to be polite. I'm going to be professional. I'm going to impress them so uh i noticed one of them's wearing kind of like one of those uh <laughs> the mechanic type style t-shirts where he has the logo of his company on the other side there's his name embroidered perfectly and i wasn't mad i wasn't angry at what had happened we just were trying to find somebody to come fix it right and on the side i see r-a-n-d-y and i'm like oh okay hey this guy's name is randy cool that's awesome so as you go into it to be professional i go up to him and I say hey randy patrick and he looks at me and he goes rudy Oh, oh shit! So uh, I felt like the uh, I felt like a right jackass at that time, and I deserved it because apparently I can't read. But I swear it said Randy when I read it the first time. So here's this guy who's coming here. He's dealing with it. He looks like he's no, he's not mad, but he looks like I was worried that he took it as a passive aggressive comment, like "Hey, Randy, you're too busy being Randy to take care of." Them. Anyway, but immediately. I said I was sorry, took responsibility for it, and said that, uh, you know, hey, I uh, called you by the wrong name. My bad. I, uh, you know, it, it was embarrassing, but it, what can you do? You take, you take, you take it and you move on. Well, uh, that's, that's with me. How about you? I'm sure this week's been a little bit interesting, especially if you're a YouTube creator. And uh, boy, have I seen a lot of YouTube creators this week, and boy, have I seen a lot of activity and uh, it's uh, inspiring, you know, even though it comes out of a very negative place, it's, it's neat to see people who know that there's other like-minded people like them out there and they're trying to, they're trying to make it okay. You know, there, there's a lot of people who put a lot of work into their YouTube channel and uh, it's just, it, it's a mess right now. And everyone's just trying to make this deadline, this February 20th deadline. I don't expect myself to make that personally. I don't feel like I have to. I appreciate the work, and of course, you know, everyone's going to try to do what they can to at least get where they want to be. I think there's a contentment in knowing that you can, uh, you're just going to do the best you can, and that's really all any of us can really do. I really do appreciate those of you that commented and, and uh, said those nice things about the last podcast. It, it, um, it really came from the heart, and it was a little, it came across a little bit too serious. Did it come across too serious? I hope it did. But it meant uh, a great deal to me to see that, and it's always. I'm sure as fellow creators, you know, it inspires me and more to make more. So please keep it up. You're doing a great job. Even if you don't think you are, you will get to where you want to be. 
you're not going to get there all at once. None of us are, but know that you're not alone. And, uh, I, you know, I, I support you as well. It made me think about the whole responsibility. Who's, who's to blame that this uh, thing with YouTube happened and everybody can look at each other. Everybody can look at the YouTube executives and it made me think about responsibility in a very funny way. Responsibility is not really something you have unless you take it. You can't have responsibility unless you take responsibility. You can never give responsibility. I mean, it, it would be so great if you could just assign responsibility to somebody. But at the end of the day, whether you're in a job or you're in a household or you're in a, you know, a, a YouTube style business, you can never truly have responsibility for anything unless you take it first. You have to be able to appreciate the amount of people who have been given opportunities in their life and have either turned them down or not accepted them because they understand what gravity comes with accepting responsibility. An example, in high school, I was a part of a JROTC program. I was very excited. Everybody was really excited. It's a cool opportunity to be able to be with your friends and learn cool things. And uh, eventually, you could, you know, you go through the ranks by participating in events and just showing that you're that you genuinely care about it. Well, I was excited because I had the guys with me, and I loved my school. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure if you haven't heard, you know, I'm I love my high school. It was a great place, and it's still a great place. And I just I appreciated the mindset there. I and I'm not just saying that as in like oh, those are the glory days. I've uh, had the opportunity to uh, marry someone who came from another high school, and and I learned a lot about their experience and, and, it, and it was shocking to me in a way because I thought, wait a minute, why, why was our experience so drastically different? And I don't know if it's a mindset that's developed because uh, I'm speaking about Eastwood High School in El Paso, Texas, by the way. And there's something about the, uh, the environment that breeds a certain type of mindset that I'm sure a lot of you can relate to where you you're treated fairly you're actually treated competently and I feel like there's a lot of teachers and educators who treat students um, they talk down to them and all that and uh, they always treated us very like equals in a lot of ways and, and that was my biggest takeaway from that well anyway I was able to become uh, the battalion commander cadet battalion commander and uh, it was it was something that I found out later on was first offered to my brother but he turned it down, and I thought, oh, my gosh, why would he turn that down? It's such a prestigious, prestigious position. And he, accept, and he sa accepted a more humble position. And uh, I always wondered, why did he do that? Well, you know, they, they came to me. Because the way it worked is that usually you were put into a position to become that. You were put into the position below that the year before your senior year. And then your senior year, you'd become the, the battalion commander. And uh, I thought my brother was going to do that for sure, and... Anyway, it, it's just, it perplexed me why he didn't. And then I took it, and then I found out what was happening that year, and it was an extremely important inspection year for that school. This school had a history of always having the highest level star on their uniform. For anybody who's ever been in JRTC may know this, but it's a gold star. And the below that is a blue star, which there's nothing wrong with, and, and below that is a white star. Well... I was not adequately prepared. I, I felt I was. I thought I was. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want the best position that you could get? But I learned very quickly that you know there's a lot of um, work that came with that that I didn't fully understand, and I realized that I was relying too much <clears throat> on people to do the job for me. And uh, at the point at which I realized that, I kind of shied away because I was ashamed that I didn't know what I was doing. You know, here I was in this amazing position but the difference between following and leading is as thick as a as a book you think oh okay well I'm, I'm so good at following all it takes is for me to be in charge and then i'll i'll have that ability to show how good i am and and it's night and day and anybody who's ever worked with or collaborated with anybody on youtube i'm sure can share this is that you start off very ambitious and you start off very happy but then once you're put in charge of something Something happens. You realize you don't have to do the work. Nobody's holding you accountable. Nobody's holding you responsible. So you have to take responsibility. Well, I never took responsibility, and our school got its first blemish in its entire history. And I, uh, I, I, I suffered with a great deal of uh, frustration and other issues because of that. But, you know, there's not much you can do. You pick yourself up. You dust yourself off if you can. And then you move forward.
but I think I took responsibility for that too hard. It made me, uh, again, develop these preconceived notions of what it is to take responsibility. So I've been turning down responsibilities <laughs> ever since then, you know? I don't know. You want to be in charge of this? No. Hey, Patrick, can you work on this for me? No. Hey, you know what we should do is work on that? No. And it's almost like you create this mindset that if you are not willing to do it yourself, you're not going to expect anybody else to do it. So it's, it's harder to be in charge, for me at least. And I, I think a lot of people can relate to that. My point is this. You have a lot of opportunities coming to you in your life. They may not be ones you like, but they're certainly ones you would do good at. And maybe there's ones that come at you that you're like, oh, I, I want that, you know, I want to be able to be this big YouTube celebrity one day. I want to be able to have that influence. I want to be able to have that extra income. Oh, no, I don't have to be as big as the big guys. I just have to be a little bit. So I have a little bit on the side. But are you willing to accept responsibility for it? We all think we do. We all want to. Some of us just have fun with YouTube and they just play video games and they just talk like this and, and they make people laugh, and which is what our goal is at Jackass Express. And, and they, they're satisfied with that, and that's wonderful. That's where I operate. That's where I want to be. But a lot of these people who think that they can just someday make it to these big-time things and then everything will just be different in their lives, I, I think it's, it's an illusion. I really do. And that's not to discourage you, and you should never give up, and you should always follow your, your passions and what, what you're determined to uh, accomplish. But think about what people think of most YouTube celebrities nowadays. You have the amazing ones, and then you have the ones that people go on a witch hunt for, and they don't even remember why. And it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult beat. It's a difficult scene. And I think, why do people, especially nowadays, decline responsibility so quickly? Why do most people take responsibility? Is it because they want to? They want to be this big shot? I think wise people don't take responsibility. I think they accept it. I believe that someone who's meant to be in charge doesn't want to be in charge. Somebody who wants to lead doesn't want to lead. But the people around them tell him or tell them, you know what, we need you to step up and to be a leader here because you possess the capability of doing that. And a leader reluctantly accepts responsibility. Hopefully not in the whole, you know, Star Wars way, you know. I begrudgingly accept this responsibility. Create a new empire. If you find someone who's over eager to lead, that's a keen sign that, yeah, they're, they are not meant to be in that position. And I think we all uh, can uh, relate to that experience in larger scales than our own personal circles. But it's important to remember that you, if you have leadership potential, and you know, I think people know. Do you like people? Can you learn to like people? Can you learn to work with people? Can you learn to, you know, relate with what they're doing? Then those people are called to action and they're, they, you're almost required to become a leader, but you don't have to be one. You, you don't get responsibility. They can say, okay, now you're the leader. We're going to do whatever you do. But look how many times people try to do that to people, especially on the internet. They'll find the role model and then they'll say, okay, we're going to do whatever he does. But that person's like, I don't want that. So they said, no, we're going we're gonna to make you be that person. And then they end up getting disappointed when they, you know, dumb things. They, they make poor decisions, especially with videos. And uh, you can't do that to people. You can't force them to be a leader. Even from the perspective of other people, you can't give them that responsibility. They have to accept it because they won't accept responsibility for what you do while you're following them. My point is this. Be aware of what your strengths are. Be aware of what your weaknesses are. Be honest with yourself. I always say that about anything. Be honest with yourself. Are you going to go into this? Do you think you can do it? Yeah. Be honest with yourself. Can you? Yeah. Do it. Can you not? You waver a little bit. You question yourself. Maybe you rethink it. And that's not to say that you can't learn to do stuff and you can't get better at it. But really decide if you want it. Because I think if it's something that you really want, you're not going to question taking responsibility for it. You're going to be like, I want that. I want to do that. I can't, I can't not do that. Even if it all falls apart and I get blamed for it, I want to be responsible for that. And ironically, that's how you find out what it is you're meant to do in life. And that's how you figure out where your passions are. Even if you're afraid to admit it, it's the things that you're eager to accept responsibility for. But you know that it's going to take a lot more than you have and you're going to have to 
work with others first. They always say the, the key to being a, a good, a good leader is being a good follower first. And usually when you're a good follower, that's when you learn that you don't want to be the leader. You don't want that responsibility, but through your efforts of being such an amazing follower, people call you to be a good leader. You don't ask for the leadership position. It usually comes and asks for you. And when that happens, you have to have the courage to say no or yes. Because leadership, being in charge, it really is a thankless job. Like I said, why do leaders eventually decide that maybe they don't want to be in charge? I think there's a number of reasons, but one is appreciation. People aren't appreciative as they used to be anymore. People don't think the people in charge anymore. They usually want to put somebody in charge because why? They want somebody to blame. People, educated people, they, they know that. So they want to stay away from the position to where they're basically the punching bag or the uh, therapeutic pillow that people punch whenever things go wrong. But then when things go right, other people look at that person and say, he thinks he's that good. I could do a better job than that. Instead of appreciating what he's done and being thankful for what they did. Everybody's, it's not even dog eat dog. It used to be dog eat dog. Now it's nobody wants to be in charge and everybody wants to be in charge. But then when the time comes for failure, the time comes for success, it's an interesting dynamic. Can they accept success? Are they responsible for success or do they fall apart? And when things fall apart, can you take responsibility for that or are you going to point and blame to somebody else on your team? Are you going to turn it and blame it on the people that, on Randy, who had nothing to do with it. He was just there to fix the wall. But yet, Randy, it's your fault. I'm sorry, Randy. It's a word that I've always taken for granted about what it means. It's a word I never fully learned to come to appreciate the gravity of. And when you tell somebody, you're a responsible person, I feel like that should be elevated to the highest compliment you could possibly give someone. Because that person has earned the title of responsible coming from your mindset, from your mouth. But also, you know, do you, can you also understand what that means when you tell somebody they're responsible? Are you looking to blame somebody because you want them to be in charge? Or do you want them to be in charge because you honestly feel like they have the potential to grow? They have the potential to help other people. Some people don't trust that's another reason why a lot of people don't accept responsibility is because they don't trust one another. They don't trust that people will repay the favors that they do for them, that they'll put forth the same amount of effort that they will, that they'll meet deadlines and that they won't make up excuses and that they won't. And I'm not saying that we're not human. People make mistakes and people think, but when they're consistent and the excuses turn to jokes like, oh, uh, oh, well. That's when you have to stop working with those people. That's, I invite you to really explore this this yourself, and I don't want to be going on about this all the time. It's just it's crazy to see in especially the culture that we've created nowadays in YouTube. And make no mistake, the creators have created the culture in YouTube. Their YouTube just reacts to it. They don't own it. They don't create it themselves. They try to steer it as best they can, but obviously we've seen what's happened with them. But you possess the amazing. You possess everybody possesses an amazing ability to us to want other people to be in charge, but unless they accept it, you can't give them that role. You can't give them that responsibility. Okay, so this week I don't have a question from WeChat. Are you surprised I'm not? But instead I have a question for you because now I know there's more people who have taken the opportunity to watch this and I appreciate you taking responsibility for that. Ha ha ha, sorry. And I ask you, what are the things that you've taken responsibility for that you regret taking responsibility for? Or is that even such a thing? Is it that you shouldn't ever regret anything you took responsibility for because that built you into the person you are today? What are things you took responsibility for and you really have stuck to it to this day? Your weight, your financial situation, your desire to want to pursue being a YouTube content creator. What do you push past the feelings of, you know, goosebumps and good fizzy feelings and push past that just simple desire into the actual work of it and you still say, I'm going to do this no matter what. I like to think it's this for me. I'd be very excited to hear what that's about for you. In any case, thank you for watching this, the Pat's Podcast. The Pat Podcast, not the Pat's Podcast. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever called somebody Randy? 
please uh, remember that we are on iTunes. I am on iTunes along with the, the JE podcast, the Jackass Express podcast. Uh, also visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jackass Express, where we post random things that we think are funny and talk about. Also on Twitter, we're very uh, – we're we – talk about both the same things on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, if you want to follow uh, our Twitter, it's at Jackass Express. If you want to talk to me specifically, it's at Celticorn, C-E-L-T-I-C-H-O-R and it should be also here on the screen somewhere at some point, just zooming in and out. And uh, I'm also on Instagram, if you care to bother that. I Apparently I am like the kids now, so go youth! And uh, I would love to talk to you there about anything, anything, even not even philosophical things. I won't talk you off about philosophical things. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate your time, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>